So is Atma Nirbhar artillery a reality? Are we taking the first steps towards what is otherwise something that could have been unthinkable some years ago? Who better to discuss this on this occasion here on Battle Cry than General Deepak Kapoor, former chief of the Indian Army? He's from the regiment of the artillery and he is in the best possible position to look back as someone who's been in wars as well to talk us through what this milestone for India means and what the road ahead looks like. Uh, thank you very much, General Kapoor, for being with us here on Battle Cry on India Today. Always a privilege to have you with us on the channel. My first question to you, General Kapoor, is, you know, an Indian private sector company bagging an export order to the tune of $155 million for an indigenously developed and produced, uh, you know, artillery product. How much of an achievement is this, sir? I would say it's a tremendous achievement, uh, Shiv, but my only suggestion to the Indian companies which are bagging uh, a number of these foreign orders because of their ability to be produce some excellent guns, I would say first look inwards, provide uh, your indigenous capability to make sure that the artillery of the Indian military is strong enough to face the challenges that it has to face and then look outward to provide guns to uh, export. Th those same companies, General Kapoor, would turn around and say that, you know, all our products have been available for many years to the Indian Army. You know, there are trial after trial. Nobody can fault the Indian Army for having very stringent requirements and criteria. But is there, is there some kind of disconnect there, sir, when a company is able to you know, persuade a foreign customer even before it can persuade the Indian army? Uh, Shiv, if I may say so, there is no disconnect whatsoever. In fact, uh, most of the companies, the private companies of the country, which have got into collaboration with foreign concerns and have got, got the technology as well as have developed their own technology, they have also been assisted all along by the, uh, the artillery uh, specialists of the Indian Army and yeah. to that extent they have carried on going ahead with trials but the, as far as the standards are concerned the Indian Army follows very stringent standards and we have varied terrain whether in the northeast, in the desert, in the uh, mountains of East Ladakh so therefore yes. whatever guns come into play in, with the Indian military have to prove their worth in all these terrains so and therefore also to ensure that when you produce huge guns like uh, A tags or others of the 52 caliber type that the country's infrastructure must be able to ensure that those guns can reach their respective gun position uh, without too much of a problem and be able to deliver when required mm. for the national defense of the country. So to that extent, the private companies have also been assisted quite a lot by the DRDO yeah. and others. And so therefore, my only request is that they first meet the indigenous requirement. Speaking of the uh, ATAGs, uh, General, uh, how does this gun, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, look in your view? Because this is one product that is seen as, you know, a true modern, ground-up, artillery uh, gun that's been produced specifically for the Indian Army. Uh, it is still under trials. It's a very promising product, uh, you know, but it has still not reached that, uh, you, know, that, 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 you know, that finish line, as it were, where, uh, you know, actual orders are placed. How do you see this uh, system? Because, uh, like you rightly said, this is a system uh, which has been designed using the inputs and requirements of the Army. The DRDO ha has developed it in collaboration with the private sector, sir? Uh, well, ATAX, uh, if I may say so, Shiv, is an excellent gun. In yeah. some of the trials that, it, that have been carried out with it, it has definitely proved its worth, but all those trials have to be gone through. ATAX is a 52 caliber gun, giving us the longest range possible, and that is what uh, any good gunner or a, any, any good military would require. To that extent, ATAG is excellent. The moment the Indian artillery and the Indian Army feel that 
it has successfully completed trials, they would be very happy to have this gun. And I must say that the private yeah. concerns connected with ATEX have been working pretty hard to produce such a gun. And that is how we look at the future of the Indian artillery sh shiv. General, you know, you've been a war veteran, sir. You've seen operations, uh, uh, you know, many, many number of times. Uh, uh, you've been in Operation Parakram. You were in the 1971 war. After the Kargil war, there was this famous document called, you know, the Field Artillery Ras Rationalization Plan, which you are, of course, very familiar with. Uh, how much of that can be achieved, sir, in your view, by indigenous products? Uh, the reason I ask this is uh, that uh, a, a, a couple of those requirements, including ultralight guns, has been met from a contract with, uh, you know, for the M777s. Then you've got the, the tracked self-propelled howitzer guns where we are building them under license from South Korea. Uh, are the other requirements under this plan achievable through indigenous products, sir? Uh, you are absolutely right. We are going ahead with K-100, uh, which is from uh, Korea and they, therefore South Korea, and we are yeah. going ahead with some additional uh, guns of that variety, and they have proved their worth uh, yeah. in, in various areas, including uh, East Ladakh. And likewise, we have also acquired ultralight howitzers, something, a process which was started when I was the chief, yes. and that has also met with fructification. But what is happening today, thanks to the government's policy of Atam Nirvarta, a lot of push has been given to indigenous development and a whole lot of private sector like uh, the Tatas, the Mahindras and uh, the Kalyani group, etc. have been going ahead and working hard to produce weaponry which is of use for the Indian Army and to that extent, uh, it's only a matter of time. I'm sure we would be able to reach a fructification, have guns which will prove their worth. It's the quality of guns which made the difference at Kargil. And what is happening in uh, Ukraine today has also mm. shown the predominance of artillery making a difference to the entire uh, outcome of a battle. So, but I do feel that the private sector is working pretty hard in conjunction with uh, foreign technology which has been either transferred or they've gone into collaboration. Yes. So it's only a matter of time when uh, all this should come true. And, but the, uh, our problem is also a little more acute because we do face a challenge on both our northern as well as the western side simultaneously today. Picking up on something you said about the Ukraine war and some of the lessons uh, you know, that we've seen there, sir, uh, General, uh, is... The, you know, the application and the utility of artillery in the modern battlefield. Surely, as you rightly said, we've seen it happen uh, you know, you know, in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. In the Indian context, how do you see it, sir? You know, we, we, we see a lot of talk about the futuristic battlefield, you know, uh, much more modern types of weapons. Are you saying that artillery still has a very, very important place in any future conflict as far as India is concerned? Uh, Shiv, uh, let me go back to the Kargil war. I do yeah. not think you are going to find a bigger example of the, the usefulness of the artillery than what happened at Kargil. Yes. Specifically at heights which were totally dominated by the other side, our troops were able to go and capture them after the artillery had pro uh, absolutely pulverized those positions with very, very accurate fire. And when we talk of a future battlefield, we are looking at accuracy, precision, which would, of course, be provided by whether you look at uh, force multipliers like uh, the UAVs or uh, other technology, but the weapon which is going to deliver at the target end, and the farthest it can go and deliver at the target end, it is the artillery which therefore becomes a very, very crucial factor in winning uh, battles, especially when troops have to attack such objective or defend, and while defending to ensure that the attacker is given a suitable slab before mm. he comes any closer to our defenses so that we can make sure that our territorial integrity is protected. One final question, uh, uh, General Kapoor, is 
what would be your message in that case? You know, if the companies are listening, of course, they're in touch with the Indian Army as well. Like you said, it was during your tenure as well that many of these uh, projects actually began. Do you feel that everything is going on track or do you think there need to be some changes? Well, I would say that uh, a lot of things are moving on track, but it would help the Indian military a lot if the processes could be hastened up. Yeah. Of course, that is a responsibility not only of the private sector, but also of the military to ensure that these trials, etc., are carried out in a fashion so that whatever is done required to make sure that improvements are carried out in various gun systems which are under trial and they are done at a quick pace so that what we need for the frontline soldiers is produced for them so that they can ensure that the national security is always protected. General Deepak Kapoor, always a pleasure and a privilege listening to you, sir. Very valuable to hear your words on this crucial story that we chose to put the spotlight on this week on Battlecry. Thank you, General. Thank you very much.